personal uh, Saturday? Uh, it, was, it was great, you know, coming from there and, and having to you know, beat them here at home. That was just a great feeling. Did you know that you were going to get the first play of the game for a while? Uh, actually, I did. I, I found out, you know, right before we went out, and you know, coach, me and Paul, and you know, about his play call, and I knew then, but I didn't know he was going to actually call it. So it worked out. He did. So he talked to you before the game about maybe this is one thing. Well, you know, like right before we came out, before the game, you know, you have our offensive, defense, and big and we talked about it then. Knowing what you did against Alabama's run defense, and the amount of yards you were able to. You know, that puts a lot of confidence, you know, with them, you know, being a great defense and a run stop defense and putting up the yards that we did, you know, overall, you know, O line did a great job and Trent did, you know, they contributed with a lot of yards. So that puts a lot of confidence, you know, with us, you know, so, you know, that we did that. So we're going to take that to the next game and try to do it again. What do you see as the uh, specific challenges that, that uh, Missouri can present as far as uh, the run on the run defense? Um, you know, they have a great defensive line, great defensive end, so I think that's going to be, you know, that's a big strength for them. And I think that's going to be a big challenge for us, but, you know, I think we'll find a way. Talk about the offense as a whole. How much potential do you guys have to get better than right now? You know, I think we, you know, got to get a lot better. You know, each week we just try to, you know, get better week by week, and we still haven't had our best game yet, so, and we got a lot of improvement to do. And, you know, it, it's, I think it's scary, you know, that day that we do, you know, have that best game. So it's, it's a lot of room for a premium day. Corey, a lot of people seem to think that the dome and the turf gives the offenses an advantage. Do you feel that way? Um, I've heard that. Uh, I, I really don't know. You know. You know, you do play a little bit faster on turf, but I think that can contribute more to offensive, you know, than it does defensive type team, but I, I really don't know. Corey, talk about uh, when you watch watch Detroit, like on the last drive of the second quarter there, when he, he <coughs> did just about all by himself. Yeah, you know, that, just talk talk about his mentality to run like that. Yeah, you know Trey's a, you know he's a great running back, and Trey has a mentality of you know nobody can bring me down, and you know especially not one person by himself. And you know he's a great running back, and you know that's a big part, that's a big strength for him is you know power running, and, I, and he does that all the time. So it's just, it's just a part of him. Troy, he's going to have a pretty big decision to make at the end of the season for his future. How much is, have you guys talked about that just in, in meetings and being around each other and stuff like that? Um, we really haven't talked about it much. He, you know, we, it has been brought up, but you know, overall, we just try to you know, just keep the focus on the season more and just focus on what we have in front of us instead of you know, just on personal, personal things. Troy, this is kind of a strange question, but Washington, have you ever lost track of the ball when you have his own read? Because the defense is certainly good. I have. I actually have. You know, Nick and Trey, they do a great job of, you know, doing the reads. And sometimes when we do watch them, I have, and even coach, we had it have a trick coach that he thought Nick had the ball and Trey had it, and vice versa. Coach Malzahn said that Nick should be in the eyes of discussion. What, what do you think? I agree. You know, he's a great quarterback, and he's made plays all over the field for us throughout the season. And without some of those play, plays he's made, I don't think we'd be in the position that we are now. How's he changed just on and off the field? He seems to be much more comfortable even talking to media guys. Yeah, uh, it, throughout the season, you know, it has calmed down to where, you know, he has, he's more comfortable on and off the field. And I think he's just, you know, getting more into the groove of it and, and accepting the fact, you know, that he's a big part of his offense. So you got a group he hangs out with? Has he got to that point where he's got some buddies he hangs out with, comfortable with? Not really. He, you know, he has his couple guys, but he doesn't really just hang with the group, you know, with him being the quarterback. I think he knows that, so he tries to mingle with everybody. How much did his play against Mississippi State in that last minute touchdown kind of elevate his confidence and y'all's confidence in him? You know, with it being in that situation and at the last minute of the game and going for the win, I think after making that play, that put a lot of confidence <coughs> in him and, you know, knowing that he could do that and, you know, throughout the season just keep making plays like that. Or you're from around here, so people that you know probably know the significance of the Iron Bowl. What are the what are some of the best texts and calls that you've received from fans or friends? What are some of the craziest things that you said? Um, I really haven't gotten any crazy texts yet, but you know, just from like you said, being around here, probably the best feeling is you know, Bama fans actually texting me and you know, congratulating me and not having any um, harsh things to say. What was that scene like for you? I mean, what, what what was your experience on the field after? 
Yeah. Um, Are fans come up to you or what? Yeah, I, I actually really couldn't believe it at first, you know, that we had actually did it because I didn't see, I was following the ball throughout throughout the play and I didn't see Chris back there on the goal line because um, I was just following the ball. But as I followed the ball, he caught it and I was, after he turned the corner and I, I saw he, he made the kick or miss, I knew from there, you know, we had won, but I was just still in shock. <laughs> With all the national hype, and I know Chris Davis got a standing ovation in class up, is it hard to kind of shut that out and focus on one game and not look forward? Yeah, you know, it is. That is hard, you know, to shut that out with, you know, that that was a great win, you know, probably one of the best Iron Bowls of all time. But, you know, we got to, this game this week is going to be even bigger. So we got to shut that out and, you know, look forward. Are, are your grandkids going to be hearing about that play for your I believe they will. <laughs> they will. Is that, how long do you think, you know, it's a little something about the rivalry? Is that going to be forgotten? Is that going to be one of those plays that, uh, I don't think that never be forgotten, especially on the type of play it was. You know, a uh, field goal taken back for a touchdown. That's that rarely happens. So that, that was just a great play. Corey, um, Trey, you know, seven, no, eighteen rushing touchdowns now. Uh, yet he's kind of starting to get a little bit of a pub where uh, with the Heisman and stuff like that. Do you feel he's being kind of overlooked at all, like for his performance? Yeah, you know, I, actually I do. You know, Trey's a big part of his offense, and you know. He, he works hard, and you know, I think without him, you know, throughout the season, we probably wouldn't be where we are either. So I think he is getting overlooked a little bit. Do you, is there a belief on this on this team that it's a close game at the end? Something's going to happen that we're going to win. I mean, it doesn't matter how uh, unlikely it may seem. Yeah, you know, we came to the end. You know, coach always says if it comes down to the end, we're going to find a way to win. So. I kind of, you know, had the feeling that, you know, we're going to win, but like Coach says, it's, we're going to find a way. So it was kind of iffy, but I knew, I knew it was going to come through. Do you believe in, like, mystical forces at work here? Uh, no, I don't. It's just, I don't know. It was just a, it was a great play. Corey, on, on that, I mean, have you got a chance to kind of just formalize the fact that, you know, teams go years or decades without having plays like you guys had in two consecutive games? Yeah, you know, that's I have I've thought about that, you know, past two games, you know, it came down to the last play of the game and it came to, you know, work out in our favor. But like against George, you know, that was just a just a miracle, you know, it was just a great play. But I kinda look at this game, you know, that's kind of more of a coaching standpoint, you know, to put Chris back there, you know, coaches, you know, with their job, you know, they should know stuff like that and I think that was just a, a great deal of coaching from our coaches putting Chris back there in that situation and and with that happen. Corey, uh, I saw a video of Coach Lashley dancing in the locker room after the game. What's it like to see your coaches that excited? Yeah, you know, that was a great, that was a great sight to see. <laughs> um, seeing a coach, you know, dance in the locker room with the players and to see that excitement from him, that just, that just made everybody else even, even more excited. How are you great news? Since you might see this, I said 10. <laughs> <laughs> when, when are y'all going to get Gus? I mean, what, what's it going to take to get Gus doing that? I don't believe that ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to other offenses you've been in, how difficult was this to learn and to pick up? And, and how efficient are y'all at it now, would you say? Um, I think it's probably one of the toughest offenses to learn. But once you get it, it's probably one of the easiest ones to run and probably one of the most effective to run. Because, you know, it just comes to the play calling. When Coach Malzahn, he's a great coach. And, you know, he puts us in positions to make plays. And we just have to go out there and make those plays. But it's, it's a great offense. It's hard to learn, but once you got it, it's, it's easy. What was hard to learn? Is it the schemes or is it the nomenclature? What is it that is difficult? It's just the schemes and, you know, the way that we learn it. It's just so much material. But after you get it, you know, it's, it's very easy. Thank you. Corey, do you think people don't give the offense the credit it deserves? They're running the same play, but people miss out on the intricacies of what you guys are doing. Yeah, you know, sometimes I do, you know, I hear that a lot. You know, a lot of uh, fans, you know, they, they think we're running the same play. You know, at times we may be, sometimes we may not. You know, it all looks the same sometimes, but it's really not. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Corey.